This is the Cascade 98 by ASIO, a compact 98% keyboard that comes in a regular and slim profile, a pre-built that has taken some design notes from the custom keyboard world. And I've been on the search for a low profile keyboard that can fill that space in my collection. And while there are cool boards out there like the Cornell P and the Technicable, those leave a little to be desired when it comes to their price. So let's take a deep dive into the Cascade 98 and see if you can hang with the big boys. Inside the packaging, you'll find that cheap keep cap and switch puller that is terrible at pulling out switches, but at least they include one here. You'll also find a USB coiled cable with a USB-C to A adapter and your quick start guide which is pretty much a cheat sheet with all the hot keys needed in order to use the keyboard. I would keep this close as there's somewhat of a learning curve when it comes to using this keyboard. And finally, coming in at around one kilograms or 2.2 ounces in freedom units is the keyboard. It does have some heft for a plastic and aluminum build. In comparison, the Zoom 65 weighs about three pounds, so there's that. Include a keycap set, obviously inspired by GMK9009, goes very well with the bronze base color. The case sports an aluminum top, which lacks from the competition, as I think this is the only low profile keyboard that comes with any aluminum. The Cascade offers a four degree typing angle and a front height of approximately, it doesn't matter because you're not gonna need a wrist rest. On the bottom of the keyboard, you're gonna find adjustable feet that will let you adjust between four degrees, six degrees, and nine degrees. You'll also find this little area where you can house your USB dongle, which is always appreciated. And to those manufacturers that don't do this, why, 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 why not make a spot to put your USB dongle? On the right side of the keyboard, you'll find your indicator cluster that consists of your connectivity, your battery life, and your profile layout, whether it be PC or Mac. Alongside the top case, you'll find your on and off switch and your USB-C connector. Now the pros, the Cascade 98 pretty much has all the features you would need in a mechanical keyboard, like an aluminum body, a standard or slim profile, it's hot swappable, has backlit RGB, can be used wireless and wired, and also has support for PC and Mac. Now due to its wireless capabilities, it can technically support up to five different devices, three via Bluetooth, one via RF dongle, and one via the wire. You'll be able to choose between the normal offerings of clicky, tactile, or linear switches, and each switch comes pre-looped. I told you they took some design notes from customs. And piggybacking on that, you can add on a Type-C aviator cable, which will come at an additional cost. But to add on one more time, you'll find a foam dampening kit. Hmm? Hmm? I wonder where they got that idea. So as you can tell, it's okay. I mean, for pre-built, what did we really expect? But there is one thing we can do to make this keyboard sound better, and that's the almighty tape mod. So I'm gonna show you how to do this if you want to attempt it yourself, but just know if you mess this up, you are on your own. I'm pretty sure Ezio does not want you doing this. So first thing you're gonna have to do is remove the six rubber feet on the back of the case. Now just know that there's an adhesive that holds these into place. So if you remove the adhesive, you won't be putting those feet back on. Underneath the feet, you'll find six screws that you'll need to remove from the bottom case. Once that's done, you can remove the top case and then remove the screws that hold the plate into the bottom case. Now doing this here, I realized that there wasn't a bottom foam like it showed in that graphic on the website. So I don't know if that's because this is a prototype unit or this is what's actually happening, but let's hope not. To combat this, I'm gonna use polyfill to fill the bottom of the case. And once you remove the plate, be careful because there's a JST connector that connects to the PCB and the battery. Remove this and then proceed to applying your tape. Now let's see how that sounds. Ooh, oh yeah. 
I think its lack in sound was also due to the low profile switches. This is the first low profile keyboard I've ever owned, so I actually don't have too much experience with what those sound profiles may be like. There may be other switches I could put in this that sound way better than the included Gateron ones, but again, I don't have too much experience in that. So if that's a deal breaker for you, you're probably gonna wanna look into the regular size format one that can take regular MX switches. Now heading into the cons. The stabilizers out the box were passable. The space bar needed some extra lube to get it where I wanted it, and even though there was foam inside the board, the bottom case seems to be a bit hollow. But it is what it is. Second con, bottom case doesn't exactly sit flush with the top of the case. The top case does have some overhang, so you won't be able to see this when the board is laying flat on your desk. And this is an early unit, but it's a con nonetheless. The next con I wanna point out is probably its biggest con, which has been the USB-C port. The USB-C port isn't exactly centered to the cutout, so a lot of my USB cables didn't exactly fit. Now, most of these are custom cables and they do have thicker housings, but that's definitely something you wanna think about when purchasing this keyboard. I mean, even the USB-C cable that was included had some issues fitting. It does fit but it's a really tight fit. And this one's probably just nitpicking, but the on and off switch also doesn't exactly fit center. Again, this is an early unit, but definitely something you wanna think about here. Now with all the pros and cons laid out, would I recommend this at $100? and $19. It depends. If you're someone that dabbles in the world of custom keyboards, I'm going to assume you at least have something like a QK65 or something equivalent, even a Keychron V series probably. This is probably the closest low profile keyboard to echo a custom experience. But when I say closest, that's probably a stretch, right? This is still a pre-built keyboard with a pre-built type of sound profile, as you can tell in the sound test. But what if you're just a normal consumer that can give a rat's ass about a custom keyboard? Then I would definitely recommend this. ASIO's goal was to create something minimalistic and functional in a design that would fit almost any desk setup. And I think that's something they nailed here. It's probably the only low profile keyboard that leans towards a more classier look, which gives it a more refined design versus a more gamery design that its competition offers. Well, minus the RGB, but you could turn that off, so that's fine. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to mention. If you do pick up this keyboard and you hit the enter button and then subscribe to the channel, you become 10% more smarter. Or if you don't pick up the keyboard and you subscribe to the channel, you still become 10% smarter. So there's that. All right, bye-bye.